Let's look at compression then. So compression is all about reducing file size while retaining the kind of core information, the underlying information that is uh, crucial to the file. So we don't want to get rid of kind of any crucial information. And clearly this means fewer bits needed to represent the same information. So storage space can be reduced and any file transfer time, so upload, download and just general transfer times can be reduced, which is important when you're paying for bandwidth and you've only got limited storage and time and so on. There are two approaches to compression, the first of which is lossy, which is perhaps the most obvious way, and this is where the algorithm actually physically removes data from the file. So clearly the file size get re gets reduced and it's quite effective, but some data is lost when you do you apply this compression. So this wouldn't be used where all the data in a file is important, for example with any text like source code, you can't afford to just chop off bits of a text document for example. But you may want to apply this where the only consequence really is a loss of quality. So for example with images and video, they can have very very large file sizes if the quality is amazing. But you can maybe sacrifice some quality if it saves you a lot of time and storage space. So a consequence of lossy compression is when you, or if you can, decompress it afterwards. The file isn't the same as the original. So in, obviously in some cases where you perhaps export an image from Photoshop and put it into a lossy format, you're not going to have a chance to decompress it because the image is an image. But if you had like a zip file in Windows where you compress it and then decompress it after, um, it wouldn't be the same as the original if lossy compression was used. So two examples of lossy algorithms are uh, JPEG for images and MP3 for audio and they're quite complicated in terms of their operation but one of the things they can do is remove so background noise or just pitches outside our human range or colours we least recognise so basically removing data that as humans we're least likely to recognise or notice is gone. In contrast to lossy compression, you have lossless compression, which, as you'd expect, doesn't actually delete any data from the file, but it rearranges the data to make it more efficient to where it can. So lossy is usually more effective than lossless, but clearly lossless is important where you don't want to actually delete any of your data. All of it's important, basically. So one way this can be done is with run length encoding, RLE. And this is all about kind of compacting repeated data. So repeated data or kind of consecutive data is called a run. And so we replace long runs with frequency data pairs. So the best way to show this is with an example. So an image is a common where is a common place where this might be used. So you have blocks of colours in an image. So you've got four yellow, got blue and four purple, then another blue. And you could replace this with these pairs of frequency first and then the data. So you have four four lots of yellow, one lot of blue, four lots of purple and one lot of blue. So clearly this is most effective when you have lots of blocks of colour. If this was just an individual if all of these were on their own or like alternating between yellow and blue for example, this would actually be much longer than the uh, original and clearly we're kind of mixing, uh, not not binary here, but this would be in binary in the computer of course. So speaking of binary, if we actually did this with perhaps a binary string, so we've got five zeros, four ones and then a zero, we would again replace them with these frequency data pairs, so we've got five lots of zero, four lots of one and one lot of zero and each of these are a pair but they would be stored consecutively of course in binary. So this would be um, you'd need long lengths of zeros and ones for, for this to be effective although you often do have lots of mostly zeros actually in my experience you have long like millions of zeros consecutively and clearly you don't want to store them individually it's so much better to store them as this pair so as I say it works best with data likely to have lots of repeats like images or matrices if there aren't many repeats like random text or an image that is very very kind of varied or it's very complicated colours then this actually may add to the length of the data so you've got to be slightly careful so generally the longer the runs are uh, the most compression you get